Max Factor is a popular line of cosmetics company from Procter & Gamble. It was founded in 1909 as Max Factor & Company, by Max Factor, a Polish Jewish cosmetician from Zdua Skarwola, Poland. In its early days, it specialized in movie makeup. Until its 1973 sale for 500 million US dollars, Max Factor & Company was owned by several generations of the family, becoming an international company during that time. Procter & Gamble purchased the company in 1991, and it remains a popular brand. History After immigrating to the United States in 1904 Max Factor moved his family and business to Los Angeles, California, seeing an opportunity to provide made-to-order wigs and theatrical makeup to the growing film industry. Besides selling his own makeup products he soon became the West Coast distributor of both Lichner and Minor, two leading theatrical makeup manufacturers. In the early years of movie making, grease paint in stick form, although the accepted makeup for use on the stage, could not be applied thinly enough, nor where did colors work satisfactorily on the screen. Factor began experimenting with various compounds in an effort to develop a suitable makeup for the new film medium. By 1914 he had perfected his first cosmetic product. With this major achievement to his credit, Max Factor became the authority on cosmetics in filmmaking. Soon movie stars were eager to sample his flexible grease paint. In the early years of the business Factor personally applied his products to actors and actresses. He developed a reputation for being able to customize makeup to present actors and actresses in the best possible light on screen. Among his most notable clients were Ben Turpin, Gloria Swanson, Mary Pickford, Polo Negri, Jean Harlow, Claudette Colbert, Bette Davis, Norma Shearer, Joan Crawford, and Judy Garland. As a result virtually all of the major movie actresses were regular customers of the Max Factor Beauty Salon, located near Hollywood Boulevard. In 1918 Max Factor completed development of his Color Harmony range of face powder which, due to its wide range of shades, allowed him to customize and provide more consistent makeup for each individual actor or actress. He created many appearances for these actresses, such as Clara Bow's heart-shaped Pierre at lips. Years later, he exaggerated Joan Crawford's naturally full lips to distinguish her from the many would-be stars copying the Clara Bow look he created. He also created shades specifically for them, platinum, special medium, dark and light Egyptian. For Rudolph Valentino he created makeup which complemented his complexion, and masked the darkness of his skin on screen. In 1920 Max Factor gave in to his son Frank a Euro unregistered trademark s suggestion and officially began referring to his products as makeup based on the verb phrase to make up. Until then the term cosmetics had been used. The term makeup was considered vulgar to be used only by people in the theatre or of dubious reputation and not something to be used in polite society. In 1922 while on holiday in Europe with his wife, Factor visited the headquarters of Lichner in Germany. He was by then the biggest retailer of their theatrical stick grease paint, yet he was snubbed and kept waiting at reception. Upset at this treatment he left and immediately cabled his sons to begin selling his own brand of grease paint. Until then Factor had been making his own grease paint for use on his clients, but had made no attempt to market it while he was representing other brands. Now he concentrated on his own products, which he offered in a collapsible tube, instead of in the stick form used by other producers. His tube grease paint was not only more hygienic but also could be applied more thinly and evenly. Soon Max Factor's version was the leading brand. By the 1920s his sons Davis and Frank were heavily involved in the business, with Davis the general manager and Frank assisting his father in the development of new products. In 1925 the company received its biggest order to date when it had to complete a rush order to supply 600 gallons of light olive makeup to the set of the movie Ben-Hur to ensure that the skin color of the extras used in filming undertaken in America would match that of the darker skinned Italian extras in the scenes filmed in Italy. In 1926 for the film Mare Nostra Max and Frank Factor developed the first waterproof theatrical makeup. By the 1920s Max Factor was becoming known outside of the film community, which led to the company in the early 1930s developing an in-house public relations department. 
national distribution, while Max Factor was perfectly happy for the company to remain a specialized supplier of products to the film community, his children were convinced that they could grow the company into a much larger enterprise. National distribution began in 1927 when sales builders, an established distribution company, obtained the rights to advertise, distribute and sell Factor over a Euro unregistered trademark S products. Due to his strong connection with the film community Max Factor was able to use celebrity endorsements in advertising its products. In return for a nominal payment of one US dollar to the actress the advertising would also promote the Stara Euro unregistered trademark as latest film. Development of Panchromatic, the introduction of sound on film led to the replacement of the old noisy carbon lights with tungsten lights, which were much hotter and created a softer light. At the same time the orthotraumatic film, which until that time had been used by the industry, was replaced by super-sensitive faster panchromatic film which noticeably darkened skin colors. These developments required six months of intensive development to create makeup compatible with the new environment. Because they had been designed for black and white film the existing products were unsuitable for everyday use. This new panchromatic makeup was trademarked in October 1929. Development of Pancake The development of Technicolor film required the company to develop a new line of products as its existing panchromatic makeup left a slight sheen on the skin which reflected surrounding colors. As a result of how bad they looked in color many actors and actresses refused to appear in color films. Because Max Factor was recovering from being hit by a delivery van at the time, Frank Factor took the lead in the two years it took to develop a suitable makeup, initially called the TD and then renamed the Pancake series. It was sold in a solid cake form and applied with a damp sponge which offered the advantage of concealing skin imperfections under a transparent matte finish. Its first appearance was in the film Vogues of 1938. It was an immediate hit and its advantages led to women stealing it from the film sets and using it privately. Its only disadvantage for everyday use was that it could not be used at night as it made the skin too dark under all except under the powerful lights used in film studios. While Max Factor wanted to reserve the product for film use, Frank Factor was open to the commercial possibilities and began developing lighter shades. At the time the company was only able to produce enough to meet studio demand, which delayed commercial release until production could be increased. The company used the release of Vogues of 1938 in August 1937 and five months later the Goldwyn Follies, the second film to use the makeup, to commercially release Pancake to the public, backed by a color-based national advertising campaign. It immediately became the fastest and largest selling single makeup item to date, as well as the standard makeup used in all Technicolor films. Beauty Micrometer In the 1930s, Factor helped to develop a mask-like device to measure the contours of subjects' faces. He called it the beauty micrometer. Its purpose was to detect even barely visible structural flaws, that might be magnified and more noticeable on camera. A technician could then apply makeup to mask the problem. Max Factor's death After Max Factor's death in 1938, Frank Factor took the name Max Factor, J.R and expanded the still private cosmetics firm, along with members of the immediate family including Sidney Factor, Louis Factor, Davis Factor and Max Verestein. In 1939 Max Factor, J.R., began development of a smear-proof lipstick which would also both be non-irritating and not change color. A kissing machine was constructed to test the Formula Euro unregistered trademark S resistance to fading. The result was released in 1940 as True Color in six shades of red. During World War II Max Factor developed makeup shades for use by the U.S. Marine Corps in camouflaging faces. In 1947 after 26 months of development by Max Factor, J.R., the company released Pan Stick, a cream makeup supplied in stick form and designed to take advantage of the latest changes in studio lighting and film stock. This product was quick to apply as well as non-greasy. It was released to the public in 1948 and was immediately commercially successful. In 1951 the company expanded their range to offer a range of male shampoo, aftershave lotion, deodorant and shaving foams. 
the introduction of color television led the company to develop Max Factor color TV makeup, which became the standard for using color television. In 1955 the company released Electrique, its first fragrance and three years later Primutif. In 1956 Max Factor Incorporated purchased sales builders, which had until the time handled all of their national sales and distribution. This led to a complete reorganization of the Campania Euro unregistered trademark S American Markets, Advertising, Sales and Distribution Division. By the 1960s, Max Factor, J.R., Max Ferestein, and grandsons Donald Factor, Alfred J. Ferestein and Chester Lee Ferestein were still involved. Under his leadership, in 1965 Max Factor, J.R., established Mia Ness, a line of makeup, skincare and perfume products that were sold only by uniformed clerks in department stores. The packaging and products were different. Many of the containers were designed to resemble Greek sculptures. The early 1960s saw the company become a public company and list its Class A stock on the New York Stock Exchange. This period also saw the third generation of the Factor family, Barbara Factor, Davies Jr. Factor, Donald Factor, Alfred Ferestein, and Chester Ferestein rising to senior positions within the company. His place of work is now a museum located in downtown Hollywood. Merger with Norton Simon by the early 1970s Sydney Factor had retired from the board, and Barbara Factor, Donald Factor and Davis Jr. Factor from the third generation had also left the company to pursue other interests. As a result there was decreasing family involvement. Davis Factor was still board chairman while Alfred J. Ferestein was president and CEO when in 1973 the company agreed to merge with Norton Simon. This event was marred weeks later by the sudden death of Alfred J. Ferestein at the age of 48. Chester Ferestein succeeded him as president of the company, only to resign three years later in 1976, to devote his time to his personal interests. He was replaced by a non-family member. His departure, together with that of Max Factor, J.R., in the same year, meant that there were now no members of Max Factor's immediate family working for the company. During Chester Ferestina Euro unregistered trademark S time in charge the company expanded overseas and launched many new products including Musk for Men, Ultra Lucent Waterproof Makeup and, in 1975, the successful Halston line of fragrances, which quickly became the second best-selling designer fragrance in the world, trailing Chanel No. 5. It was under Norton Simon that Max Factor launched Moxy, a line of makeup aimed at a younger, more savvy consumer. Moxie sold products aimed at adolescent tastes, such as lip gloss, color rubs and mood lipsticks. Moxie was priced to compete with market leaders Bumbel and Covergirl. Neither Moxie, Jmir Ness, nor Max Factor were able to lift the company's declining profits and market share. In 1983 Norton Simon was taken over by Zmark, by which time no one in the Factor family was involved in the Campania Euro unregistered trademark S day-to-day -day operations. A year later Zmark merged with Beatrice Foods, which lumped Max Factor into their Playtex beauty division and moved the Max Factor headquarters from Los Angeles to Stamford, Connecticut. In 1986, Ronald Perriman of Revlon bought the Playtex beauty division for $500 million. In 1991, Revlon sold Max Factor to Procter & Gamble for $1.5 billion. As of 2011, Procter & Gamble still owns the Max Factor brand. By the first quarter of 2010, Procter & Gamble had discontinued Max Factor in the United States, instead focusing its marketing efforts on the more successful CoverGirl cosmetics line. Max Factor will continue to be marketed overseas. Max Factor is also exclusively available through drugstore.com in the United States. Innovations Max Factor is credited with many cosmetic innovations, among which are, 1914 release the first cosmetic made specifically for motion pictures, a thinner grease paint made in 12 shades. It was in cream form and packaged in jars, as opposed to the thicker stick grease paints used for theater. 1917 released Supreme Liquid Whitener which provided the means of obtaining an alabaster smoothness on the neck, shoulder, arms and hands. 
1918, released Color Harmony, a range of face powder which due to its wide range of shades allowed the customizing of consistent makeup for an individual actor or actress. 1925, released Max Factor's Supreme Nail Polish, a metal pot of beige-colored powder that was sprinkled on the nails and buffed with a chamois buffer, to give nails shine and some tint. 1927, released Society Nail Tint, a small porcelain pot containing rose-colored cream. Applied to the nail and buffed, it gave a natural rose color. Society Nail White was also released. This was a tube of chalky white liquid that was applied under nail tips and left to dry. The end result resembled the modern French manicure. 1928, developed cosmetics specifically for use in black and white films. Max Esser was awarded an Oscar award for this innovation. 1930, invented lip gloss. 1932, developed a line of television makeup, specifically to meet the needs of television. 1934, released liquid nail enamel, forerunner of today's nail polishes. 1935, opened the unique Max Factor Makeup Salon in Los Angeles. 1937, released Pancake, forerunner of modern cake makeup, originally developed for color films. 1940, released True Color Lipstick, the first smear-proof lipstick. 1948, released Pan Stick Makeup. 1954, released Erase, the original concealer, and developed a line of cosmetics specifically for color television's needs. 1971, released the first waterproof makeup. 1980, Japanese subsidiary acquired an antioxidant derived from sake wine, called Pitra. Subsequently launched Max Factor Success Key with Pitra, which would later be renamed SKE. 1988, Launched the world's first clear colorless mascara. 2000, launched the first 12 hour long lasting non transfer lip color, Lipinity Lipstick. 2008, launched False Lash Effect Mascara. References Basin, Frederick E. Max Factor, The Man Who Changed the Faces of the World. New York, Arcade Publishing. ISBN A 978-1-55970-875-3A, further reading, Kent, Jacqueline C. Business Builders in Cosmetics. Minneapolis, Oliver Press. ISBN A 1-881508-82 Xa, external links, Max Factor website, Max Factor at the Fashion Model Directory, Max Factor Museum, Max Factor Makeup Artist Jan Thomas, Video Interview, Former Max Factor Creative Director Jason Martz.